Louisiana Beer Review Chocolate Ale from Boulevard Brewing. This is a limited release. This is from 2020. Uh, well, it says it's a 2021 edition, but it was actually bottled in December 2020. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's like a car. You know, 2019 will come out in 2018, that kind of thing. 8.7% alcohol, 11 international bitterness units. I don't know when this beer hit the market, but it hadn't been too long because Boulevard itself has only been around since 1989. And in the world of beer, that's like the other day. Uh, this is brewed in collaboration with Christopher Elbow, Kansas City Chocolate Company, founded in 2003. I've been to Kansas City, Missouri. I don't think I've been to Kansas City, Kansas, except maybe driving through it. Uh, it's one of those cities that's in two states, Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas. Texarkana, Arkansas, Texarkana, uh, Texas. And uh, there's others. Um, this was given to me by the Whiskey Scout, Robert. Thank you so much for this and all those other wonderful gifts. Gets an 85 out of 100 on Beer Advocate. Good. Uh, they say very good. I would call that good. 88 out of 100, which I would call very good, B plus on rape beer. They give it a 99 out of 100 in the style, chocolate ale. 99. And a 74 on untapped. I've never had this. I've noticed there's a pretty good amount of video reviews, which I intend to watch in a few minutes while I'm writing the written review on beer advocate, rape beer, and untapped. It's warm today, but cloudy. Very nice though, no problem. Cloudy, a bit humid, but warm during the winter is fine by me. Okay, so I thought it was gonna be like dark chocolate looking, but it's, it isn't. It's just um, a light tan translucent but not clear and there's a lot of sediment oh yeah all kind of sediment throughout little chunks of sediment a uh, bubble here and there stuck to the side but I don't there's yeah there are some bubble streams in the middle but they're lazy bubble streams like this lazy afternoon off white head well we don't get Boulevard beers down here we never have I've only purchased them on road trips or tried them when somebody gave them to me like Robert okay Uh, not picking up any aroma at all at this point, which is strange. Maybe some faint bread crust. Um, not trying to be a smart aleck, but I'm not really detecting anything. I certainly wouldn't be talking about chocolate, except, I mean, I know it. It says it on the label. Let's go with the taste, see what we get on the taste. toasted barley malt like in other words brown white bread crust some chocolate an acrid note for some unusual reason 11 IBUs you yeah, know I thought it was low acrid hmm. odd Two out of five sugar cubes on the Cyclops scale. Two out of five bitter of uh, hop cones, though. And I was saying 11 IBUs, but it seems more bitter than 11. And I don't understand that. It seemed more like 22. They were saying on a untapped 24 out of 24 out of 100 IBUs, 24 international bitterness units, bittering units, bitterness units. They're saying 11 on the bottle. I'm going to go with what the label says. I mean, the company obviously knows what their bitterness level is. It's just a little odd. It says it's best by December of 2021. High medium body. A mostly dry finish. Okay. Uh, 8.7. Strong. It's more, it's kind of like actually a strong blonde ale. I'm saying tan, but that's 
more like a strong blonde ale. Mm. Okay, cocoa nibs. I might mention that if I didn't know better. Vanilla extract, it's sort of more vanilla than cocoa. Vanilla extract. It's weird. The Lining Kugel's Vanilla Porter, which is wonderful in my booklet, has a strong chocolate flavor, I find, more than vanilla. And this one has more vanilla flavor than a cocoa. Or, I guess saying cacao. Well, you know why they spell it cacao? Because some British explorer in Africa uh, said uh, in his reports, Oh, they grow cocoa beans here. <laughs> and he uh, didn't know how to spell it. He thought it was spelled C-A-C-A-O, cacao. But he was trying to write cocoa. <laughs> So people say, oh, cacao beans, what on earth is that? So he was really trying to write C-O-C-O-A, cocoa, cocoa, <laughs> cocoa. Well, it's funny, huh? Anyway, um, they didn't have spell check in the 19th century, but it probably would have been wrong anyway. That's, those spell checks always get stuff wrong, right? People writing things to me and I'm like, what? What are you saying? That's correcting it wrong. Oh, here comes the sun, a little late. And behind me, I thought it was going to be cloudy. Um, man, I don't know about this. The body's sort of, it's just, oh, there's some bubble streams along the side. Strange bit of uh, chunkiness. Body's kind of medium. Uh, I don't know about this beer. Chocolate stout, of course you would get the Samuel Smith's organic chocolate stout, which would um, be so much better than this beer. I hate to say it. Um, you say, what about Wells, uh, Young's double chocolate stout? Oh yeah, that five, it's only 5.2, but it's uh, way better. kind of like a high gravity malt liquor taste. <laughs> you say, oh, you're going crazy, crazy. What, it tastes like Schlitz Gold Bull? doesn't taste like Schlitz Gold Bull because that's 8.5. This is 8.7. And that's a lager. This is an ale. But um, they're both beers. And on the other hand, that one does have sort of a, like a chalky underbody, which you get with those high gravity lagers sometimes, and you will get it with ales occasionally. This one's starting to evidence like a chalky undertaste, an under feeling. I don't know. Is it a good beer? Um, I was thinking like, oh, it's going to be this chocolate, this chocolate experience. But to me, it's just like a kind of a plain Jane Grain, plain Jane Grain experience. Not to say I'm against grain. I mean, it tastes all right. It should be sitting like this. But I thought it was going to be cloudy. But I thought this was going to be chocolatey. I got a little bit of sediment down there at the swish and pour. I don't think it's going to make a difference. He said he was worried when he transshipped this, when he when he shipped this in his trunk over here. 
hadn't thought about this since he brought it to me in January, which is not long ago, really. He said, uh, I don't know, I put it in the trunk. It was like 24 degrees. He said, I don't know if these beers got frozen. And then thought, I really, he said, I don't know, I don't know. He was worried about it. I said, ah. But now I don't know, maybe something did happen because all of them, most all of them, not all of them, the Ad Astra wasn't like that. But um, they just tasted like they had a major dead note in them. The boulevards, the horny toad from Oklahoma City, the, the, the free state from Kansas. I don't know, isn't it strange that he would mention that? And now I'm thinking, after going through almost the whole set, that they did have a strange dead note. Could it, they have been frozen that, and it had, did that impact it? I don't know, I don't know the science. I brought beers back from up north in the summer in July. They've been in the trunk in the heat, the heat, the heat. No problem. Beautiful, beautiful beers. Except for camo, but uh, I don't think it was the heat. Um, but maybe the heat doesn't me mess them up like the freezing. I don't know. Strange. I'm going to give this a C. Like, you know, it's average like a 77 7.7 7 out of 10 it's okay i bet you it's not a c price look at this fancy bottle you think this this beer is uh 345 a six pack 445 a six pack uh yeah i'm pretty sure it is anyway but it's the only thing i can do with it i, I can only work with what i've got so uh a c beer i don't know that might be the key to the riddle, though, right there, what I just talked about. So, go to Kansas City and take a tour of Boulevard Brewing. Probably be a, a lot of fun.